Hi, this is Professor Lazarus again, and in this segment, we will be talking about closing our books. So before I get started in, with the example, I'm going to step aside for a moment and give you a chance to write down some of the information that I've prepared for you on the whiteboard behind me so you'll better appreciate the discussion as I go through it. Okay, now that you've had a chance to write out uh, the example below, let's talk about why do we close the books. The best analogy is one that I read years back in a textbook. It was a sports analogy and I'm going to paraphrase that uh, to help us understand this closing process a little better. Let's assume that the Yankees and the Orioles, two baseball professional teams, are playing each other. Usually when two professional baseball teams play each other, they'll play three games in a series. Let's assume that game one ended yesterday with the Orioles winning with a score of 10 and the Yankees with a score of 3. Yep, that's my fantasy that the Orioles win against the Yankees occasionally. So, again, game one ended yesterday. Now today, this evening, game two will be played. And I asked you a question. I said, at this point, on the eve of game two, what is the score for game two? Now you might look perplexed for a second and then you're going to say of course the score is 0-0 and you are absolutely right. The score at this point for game 2 is 0-0. So I'm going to follow up with a question again and say well what happened to last night's score and you're going to say well last night's game is over. This is a new game today and you're right again. So in other words we have closed the books for game 1 and game 1 score does not seep into game 2. It does not affect game 2. However, the statistics involving game one, that information does affect the players, it will stay on permanently and will affect the players' averages, lifetime averages, etc. But yet, the important point here is that each game's score stands on its own merits. So, so is it with closing. When we close the books, what we are doing is we are isolating information from one period to another in terms of the revenues and expenses specifically. So if hypothetically we were to close out the books every month, then what that helps us do is produce an income statement that only reflects that month's revenues and that month's expenses. And if we do this monthly, each month we can produce an income statement with one month of revenues and one month of expenses, and in turn we can show the net income or net loss for that one month. So closing helps us again isolate information from one period to another period. How often should we be closing? Well, there's no hard and fast rules, but mid-size and larger companies should be closing monthly because when you close monthly, then you can prepare monthly financial statements. Smaller companies don't need to close monthly. They could close more infrequently, like quarterly or even semi-annually, if the company is pretty small. Now, having said that, let's get into the mechanics of how do we achieve the closing of the books. Well, we start off with a series of closing entries that I've outlined below. So here in this example, we have the closing journal entries for Ellie Dan's company for the year ending December 31st, 2011. Now to close out, there are several steps that we need to follow. So here in this example, I've outlined four steps. Step one is where you close out your revenues. Step two, you close out expenses. Step three, you close out income summary. And step four, you close out your drawing if you have a proprietorship. If you have a corporation, you do not have a drawing account, and so there will be no need 
for step four in that case. All right, let's go back now to step one and look at the specific closing journal entry for step one. Step one again was to close out your revenues. In my example for Ellie Dan's company, we just have one revenue account called service revenue. So prior to the closing entry, let's go back and look at the general ledger. And on this side here, I have outlined an informal representation of the general ledger in the form of T accounts. So you can see that prior to the closing entry for the service revenue account, we have a normal credit balance of $20,000. Remember, service revenue is a revenue account. Normal balance is a credit, $20,000. Our task is to close out the service revenue account. What do we mean by the words closing out? Closing out means you're bringing to a zero balance your revenue account. So how do you go about bringing to a zero balance a revenue account that currently has a credit balance of 20000 You are going to accomplish this task by creating a closing entry where you debit the service revenue account, which is what we do in entry number one. We debit the service revenue account and the offsetting credit will go to this new temporary account called income summary. So we debit service revenue, 20000 credit income summary for 20000 Now, once you make that entry and then post it back to your general ledger, and you can see here, I've just shown the posting against the service revenue account only, that 20000 debit creates a zero balance. And that's how you close out a service revenue account that has a normal credit balance. Next, we go to step two. Step two is we have to close out expenses. In this example, in the interest of brevity, I've only shown you three expense accounts. But of course, in a regular company, you're gonna have many, many expense accounts, and that's fine. You'll still follow the same, the same logic and the same process. So here, with the expense accounts, prior to making this closing entry, let's look at the general ledger uh, account here for just one of them, which is advertising expense. Advertising expense prior to this closing entry had a $3,500 normal debit balance. So our job is to take this account with a $3,500 debit balance and bring it to a zero balance. How do we do that? We do that by creating a closing entry that credits your advertising expense account. And then the offsetting debit will go to that same income summary account that we used in step one. And when you have more than one expense account, you'll use the same logic and credit each of these expense accounts. Again, for the interest of brevity, I've only outlined one expense account here in the general ledger. But once you make this closing entry, where you debit income summary and credit the respective expense accounts, and you post that to the general ledger, in this case, I'm illustrating again the advertising expense only, you will find that your closing entry, when it gets posted as a credit, will bring your advertising expense to a zero balance. Remember, it had a normal debit balance before, then your closing entry was a credit to the advertising expense, and that gives you a zero balance. And as I said, you repeat the process again with as many expense accounts as you have. Next, step three. Step three is to close out your income summary account. However, to close out your income summary account, we first need to calculate the balance of the income summary. Because remember, prior to the closing process, your income summary account had a zero balance. However, Based on entry number one and entry number two, in step one and step two respectively, your income summary accounts has some activity right now. So let's look at our income summary account here. And you can see that from entry number one, from this income summary credit, when this gets posted, this got posted as a credit here to your income summary general ledger account. And then from entry number two, entry number two, you had a debit to income summary of 9,860, and that got posted as a debit to your income summary general ledger account. This creates a balance of 10,140 credit. Your job in step three is to take this credit balance of 10,140 and bring it to a zero balance. How do you do that? You do that by creating another closing entry in step three, which will debit the income summary for 10,140 and the offsetting account will go to your capital account if it's a proprietorship or to retain earnings if it's a corporation. And when you make this entry, entry number three, with a debit to income summary, and you post that 
to your general ledger income summary account here as a debit you can see the cross uh, the cross reference I'm sorry here as a, uh, a debit of 10,140 and you see the cross reference that says closing that will give you a zero balance now what is important to remember with entry number three is when you credit your capital account or your retained earnings account that amount represents your net income in this case so your net income basically is getting shifted into your capital account or into your retained earnings account increasing it step four is your drawing account and again this is only if you have a proprietorship so if you have a proprietorship then you use this closing entry and drawing is when the owner takes out money from the company for business purposes and it has it's a contra equity account that has a normal debit balance to, so to close it out we are going to credit drawing and again the offset will be to the capital account reducing your capital so in essence drawing reduces your capital now remember the little note here with the, the entry number three is where when you're using your retained earnings or capital you're not closing out the account you are merely increasing your capital or your retained earnings account through that entry number three so this is an overview of the closing out process again we go through the different entries i've given you the rationale and i hope this will help you further in your studies this is professor lazarus wrapping up and as i always like to say we accountants work our assets off